Saving Salila's Turtle, an Environmental Engineering Story, Chapter 4, A Visit to the Lab. The next day after school, I found myself watching strange, translucent shapes wriggling and drifting in a drop of water through a circle of light. The water is alive, I cried, amazed at the tiny creatures I saw through the microscope. The man behind, beside me, Dr. Gadgill, chuckled. Though we can't see them with our eyes, there are lots of things that live in the river water with your turtle. It can be very surprising to see microbes for the first time. I turned to Mother, who was sitting next to me and nodding. I wanted you to see the microbes for yourself, Salila, she said. Those tiny creatures in the water are part of the challenge of keeping water safe and clean. That's right, Dr. Gadgill said. It is just as important to remove the harmful back microbes from polluted water as it is to remove the trash that is easy to see. Some of the microbes are tiny plants and animals. Some are another type of living thing called bacteria. Not all of them are harmful, but even one harmful microbe could make you sick. How can we get these microbes out of the water when we can't even see them without a microscope, I asked. Well, there are a few ways to do it, said Dr. Gadgill. In many cities, people have their water cleaned at a purification plant before it comes through the pipes to their homes. Contaminants like dirt, twigs, and microbes are removed with filters, and then the chemical, a chemical called chlorine is added to kill any of the microbes that are left. That's why it's okay for us to drink water that comes out of our faucets, I said, thinking out loud. Even though the water comes from a polluted river, it gets clean before it comes to our homes. But what about the people who don't have filtered water brought into their houses with pipes like my grandmother? In her village, you have to go to the river to get your water. That's why grandmother boils her water, mother said. Do you remember helping to build the fire when we visited, she asked. I nodded, but I also remember grandmother said sometimes people drink water without boiling it. If there isn't enough wood to burn, Dr. Gagill nodded. Man, many villages face that problem. That's why I invented another way to clean the water. I call it the ultraviolet waterworks. It has a special light bulb, an ultraviolet light bulb. The rays of the ultraviolet light are like intense sunshine. The light burns and destroys the microbes so that so they can't harm people. So the ultraviolet waterworks helps you clean even the things in the water you can't see, I said. I don't know if I can come up with something that fancy. Technology doesn't always have to be fancy, Dr. Gagill said. Technology is anything or process that people create to solve problems. For the water in your turtle's tank, you might be able to use a filter you make at home. Something that you can separate the trash and impurities from the water. I'm sure you'll come up with a solution that will work well for your turtle. Later that day, I thought about what, doc what Dr. Gadgill and Mother had said. I felt less and less sure that I would be able to clean water from the Ganges for the Kachua. I heard Mother chuckling and turned toward her. I know that look on your face, she said. You're frustrated. How can you tell, I asked. I make that face when I'm frustrated too, she said. Now, why are you upset? I feel, I still feel stuck, I said to mother. I want to help the turtle and I think filtering water so I can keep the turtle in a tank is a good idea, but I also want to help the whole Ganges. I don't know where to start. Usually when I have a problem, I can come up with a solution right away. I guess I feel like I'm letting down the animals in the Ganges. But you're not, Salila, Mother said, thinking about helping one animal and about the problems in our environment are excellent first steps. Pollution is a big problem. There isn't one easy way to fix it. I guess so, I said, but I'm not sure if I'm taking the right steps to help just one Kachua. Never mind the rest of the environment. You know, I have some steps I use to, at work to help me solve problems, Mother said. They might help you too. What are they? I asked. They're called the engineering design process. It's a series of steps that engineers use to help solve problems, she said. 
You've already started by asking lots of questions about water pollution and the ways that people purify their water. That's true, I said, brightening. Father and I talked about the water cycle and pollution, and then I asked you and Dr. Gaggill about different ways to purify the water. It sounds like you are ready for the next step, imagining different filter designs, Mother said. Then when you feel like you're ready, you make a plan for your filter and create it. But what if I test it and it doesn't work, I asked. Mother patted my shoulder. Then you go on to the next step, improve. You can just keep improving until you've got something that's the best you can make it. I nodded. Making a filter might take a lot of thinking and testing, but I had to try and save that turtle. I spent the rest of the day imagining possibilities.